Praise the Lord and welcome. Thank you for logging on tonight. And the, the Word of God is going to go forth. And I pray with anointing and power from the Holy Spirit. So we're going to open up in a word of prayer. Father, I just thank you tonight for this opportunity. Another opportunity to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, this gospel has power. Amen. It says the Word of God does not return void, but accomplishes what it's been set to do. So Lord, may all of your Word accomplish all that you have de declared and purposed, Father, to happen tonight. And we give you all the praise. Hide your servant in your cross. Anoint me this one more time, God, to bring glory, honor, and praise unto my King and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. I want to open up in the Word of God in James chapter 4, verses 8. And I just titled today's message, or tonight's message, called Keys to Receive the Full Blessings of God. And, and what, I, what do I mean by that? Because you have to condense the title as much as possible. How do we walk in the fullness of what God has for us? And, and there is keys. There is things that God has set up in his word um, that, that if we abide by these things, if we come into what we call spiritual alignment with God, we can walk in the fullness of what God has. So tonight, I'm just going to draw a few of these uh, keys out of this story tonight. But I want to start off with James chapter 4, verses 8. And this scripture is, is the scripture, again, dear to my heart. And it says, draw near to God. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So it starts off with this drawing near to God, and that's, you know, really the first key I would pick up, but it's not from the context where I'm going to be going. But, but that drawing near to God, and it's so important because when we are born again, the Holy Spirit in us is, is yearning jealously for us to, to receive the fullness of what God has, his purpose, his destiny for our lives. And so that word draw near, it means to come close. In the Greek, it means come close. And, and listen to this, it means to approach as ready. To approach as ready. See, sometimes we can come into the house of God or into a situation and come kind of flippantly or, you know, not having our hearts prepared and so, but this is saying, draw close to God, but, but approach him as one ready to receive from him. So, and God will do the same. It says God, it's almost like God is saying, approach me and be ready to receive because I'm ready to give. Hallelujah. See, God is a giver. Amen. So, so what are the, some, some of the ways that we can approach God and receive all that God has for us? So I want to go into a scripture in Luke 5, verses 1 through 11. And I want to draw some of these principles or, or keys uh, from this passages of scripture. So Luke 5, 1. So it was when the mul as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Genezareth. And he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them, and they were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the multitudes from the boat. Verse 4, when he had stopped speaking, he said, Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Man, there's, there's a promise here, amen? But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and we have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners and to the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. Hallelujah. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Praise God. I want to go to the first key right away. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing we see is that they pressed upon or pressed in. And that word in the Greek means to rest upon. To rest upon. To set oneself to lay before, to set oneself to lay before, drawing nearer to the Lord, getting as close as they could. This displays a, a hunger and an urgency 
to get closer to God. It, it displays a hunger for, for what God has to say, and they wanted to get as close as they could. So this whole multitude, they, they're just pressing in as close as they can, and they're just pressing. I don't know if you've ever been to um, some event or waiting in line for, for something, and people just get impatient, and once they go to open the doors, it's kind of like everybody starts getting tighter and tighter and pressing harder and harder, and it's almost like, man, give me some room here, you know? But, but in that case, it was just like, I want to get as close as I can. I want front row seats because Jesus is speaking. Hallelujah. You know, some people go crazy for front row seats at a movie or, or a play or something like that or a concert. Man, how much more should we desire and press into the front row for God? You know, it's, sometimes at church, you know, you, you see uh, people who, man, maybe at a concert the week before, they were right up front. But, but in church, they're kind of sitting way in the back. And I'm not saying anything against people in the back versus the front. I'm just giving an analogy that we should have that same hunger to press in. It's like when you're worshiping God and, and the praise team and we're worshiping, man, there's this natural draw to come and draw closer to God. And you'll see people come up and, and get closer to the altar of God and, and kneel down at the altar. And Sunday I'm going to be uh, talking about, not this Sunday, next Sunday, I'm starting a series in the, uh, the altar the altars of Abraham. And I'm talking about the altar of God. But let's move on. So pressing in to rest upon, to set oneself in. And so that's the first principle. The first key is, man, be willing to press in. Be, be hungry. Be, be, you know, have this desire and this passion. And, and church, it's not something we have to build up or, or something that a show we put on. Man, it's just a natural draw to say, man, I want to, I mean, could you imagine if this Sunday we said Jesus himself is going to be here physically preaching Man, I, I don't think there'd be any room, and people would be probably at his feet. I know I'd be there. I'd be. That's one of the times I might be a little rude to others and, and kind of push you out of the way so I can get at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and you'd probably be doing the same, right? So the first principle is, is they pressed in. They pressed upon to hear the word of God. Amen. So that's the second thing is what? To hear the word of God. Is there a hunger in our hearts to hear the word of God? I don't know about you, but I love to hear the Word of God. I love to read the Word of God. Man, I love when I'm reading the Word of God and, and God brings revelation or I'm hearing someone else, uh, maybe Pastor John or, or Sway or my son at times who's preaching the Word of God, and they'll say something, man, and it just pierces me. And the Holy Spirit, man, it's just like I leap for joy inside and, and your mind starts going to all these places about what God's speaking to you. And it's amazing God can be preaching from one person in a room of hundreds or thousands and each person can be receiving something personal from the Lord. And that's why it's so important to press in. And, and sometimes when we hear a word that we've heard before, we have a tendency to say, oh, I heard that. No, man, God can bring a fresh revelation out of the word. He can, he can show you a million things out of one passage of scripture. Because, listen, he's God, amen? And it's a, the word is like a diamond. He turns it and it just keeps glittering and, uh, from every different angle, amen? And we see something uh, a little different. Hallelujah. So they gave audience, I like that word, audience, to hear the word of the Lord. This implies a desire to not only hear the word, but to have the word take effect on our life. See, I don't want to come and hear the word of God. I want the word of God to affect my life. I, and, and then I want to be infectious, amen, in a good way to others with the word of the Lord. And we know that it's the word of God that builds faith. Amen? We, we know that. Hebrews 10, 17, or excuse me, Romans 10, 17 says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we hear the word of God, it should be built, built, being mixed with faith and building up and transforming and changing us, sanctifying us into the likeness and image of our Savior. Can someone say or type amen in this case? But we're praying, hopefully, uh, not too uh, in the distant future to re-engage on Wednesday night. So we, we're back together on Wednesday night as well. And then after that, you know, children's ministries, we're, we're in prayer right now, getting direction from the Lord. So please pray for us. Amen. So the first key is pressing in, pressing upon. The second key or principle is, man, having a desire to hear the Word of God and have it take effect. And the third thing is, is interesting that God showed me in verse 2 and 3. When they saw the boat standing by the lake, and the fishermen, here's the thing that got me. The fishermen had gone out of them, and they were doing something else. And this, this, this is really kind of caught my spirit, because I noticed that 
the boats, right, they're, they're known as the vessels, right? The larger boats will say, hey, you know, board, we're boarding the vessel. And I thought about we are the vessels of God. And so when the vessels were empty, God chose to enter in. Think about this. When you're willing to be emptied, then God can fill you up with what he has. But when you come to God full of yourself, full of the things of this world, full of the things that will choke out the word of God, then God can't put anything in you. But when we come as an empty vessel, willing to say, Lord, I'm willing to be emptied of my pride. I'm willing to be emptied of my, my hurt, my anger, my pain, uh, you know, whatever it may be, you know, my struggles, whatever they may be, that God is ready, but, but God is not going to force his way in. God is not going to force his way to push out the stuff in your life that you're not willing to come in humility and surrender. But if we come as an empty vessel, say, Lord, I'm willing to be emptied so that you can fill me with what you have in my life. And that's what God did. When, see, when, 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 he, when we're full of the things of the flesh, it hinders being full of the things of the Spirit. But, but God will wait at a distance until we are willing to be emptied of whatever it is that's hindering us. And in 1 Peter gives us kind of an instruction of how to do that, how to handle that. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 through 7. And it says, Likewise, the younger, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Man, that's a word we don't like in our society today, submission, obedience. Man, that, you know, words that, ooh, don't say them, right? Yes, all of you be submissive one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. And we see this in the next few verses, and I'm going to point that out when we get there. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Well, to, to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, you've got to come under the hand of God. Amen. And, and listen, there's a thing that God showed me a while back that is the hand of God. And, and you, you talk about the, the apostle is your thumb because it can touch all the other fingers with ease, right? And then you have the, the pointer finger, which is the prophet who points the way. And then your middle finger would be the evangelist because he goes out farthest from the body. And then you have the ring finger, right? That's the pastor because he's married to the flock. And then you have the pinky finger, which is the teacher because he can get, that's the only one that can really get in your ear, amen? So if you think about that, humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God, coming into submission, it said, to the elders. So if we come under submission to the delegated authorities of God, then God can move in your life. See, some people say, well, I'll submit to God, but I'm not submitting to any man. You know, I'll submit to God, but the preacher ain't got nothing to say to me. And see, that, that is so far off. You'll, you're not going to receive anything from God because you're not humble. We humble ourselves, come on to, when you come under God, you come under delegated authorities of God. And now listen, as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. We don't blindly follow a leader. We make sure what he's teaching, what he's preaching, lines up with the word of God. And then we come into submission under that. And it's a spiritual alignment that you come in under Christ. And then it says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and he may exalt you in due time. Casting, verse 7, casting all your care. That means to throw it out, man. It means casting, throwing it off to throw it to, right? And it says, all your cares upon God or Him, for He cares for you. Church, God cares about us. God cares about what we're going through. God cares about when you're going through a hard time or a, or a sadness or a sorrow or grieving. He cares about these things in our life. And he's saying, listen, cast all those things on me. Cast all those burdens. I can handle it. Cast them on me because I care for you. Hallelujah. What he's saying is empty yourself of the cares of this world and allow me to fill you with my peace, my joy, my hope. Hallelujah. So we see the first thing is press, being willing to press in. The second thing is, man, having a desire to have the Word of God, not only hear it, but have it affect you, build your faith. The third thing is being, be willing to be emptied out so God can fill us. So the fourth thing that we're going to get to is that in verse 3. And what we see here when he said to Peter, then he got into the one of the boats, which was Simon Peter's, and he asked them to put out a little from the land, and he sat and taught the multitudes from the boat. So the, so the fourth thing is, we have to be willing to immediately respond to the Word of God. 
And, and you know that you've been in, maybe in a service or watching TV or wherever it may be, and you're, you're hearing a word of God, and something pierces you out of that word, man. Sometimes it's a, it's a conviction. Sometimes it's just a real encouragement. Sometimes it's, it's just hope or peace is built up. It, it just sparks in all different ways. But we have to be willing to respond to that word. There are times I hear something, a word preached, man, I'll just start weeping, man. It, it, it'll fill me with joy. Or, or maybe it'll hit something in my life that, man, I didn't realize or something, you know, and it touched something in my life and, and I have to surrender or I have to say, Lord, forgive me. You know, I, uh, maybe they're, they're teaching on, you know, uh, no, not having patience, you know, and I, I know that last week, man, I, I didn't have good patience all week, you know, or maybe I lost my patience in, you know, some situation, and so, man, it, it hits me, and I just immediately respond to the Word of God and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, for not being patient. Help me, Lord, with this, this patience, and, I, and, then, and then be willing to put feet to your prayers. Man, get in the Word of God. Look up all the scriptures that uh, pertain to the situation that you're dealing with. If it's patience, if it's anger, whatever it may be, and be willing to search the scriptures and be open for that conviction to come in and then us to respond to the Word of God. See, sometimes we overlook the small things that God will ask of us. You know, sometimes we're looking for the big things. Well, you know, God told me to go do this, and I didn't do it. Man, that's horrible. But all, what about the little things throughout the day that God may be speaking to us? How about sometimes when he just says, hey, go over and just speak to that person? And before this whole COVID hit, right, man, that person needs a hug. Or they just need someone to go over and say, hey, man, how you doing? And, and, and smile. You know, the, the smallest details I've noticed with God are big things with God. And sometimes he'll test us in the little things to see if we can are worthy of bigger things, right? Luke 19.17, um, go to that verse, Luke 19.17. And he said to him, well done, good servant. Because you were faithful in very little, you're going to have authority over ten cities. Church, God will test us not for us to fail, but to prove us worthy that we can be responsible. Listen, if God gave us more than we were able to handle, that wouldn't kind of be kind of God. So he's going to test those things to see, to let you know where you're at. He already knows where you're at. And sometimes if we don't pass that test, it's, it's actually God protecting us from overloading us with something that we're going to fail in. So see, the small request was just a preparation for his miracle. Think about what's going to happen in this story. There's going to be a miracle that's going to come to, to pass. God is testing him, and, it, and this miracle is going to lead him into his destiny and his purpose. You know, Peter's obedience to the Lord enabled others to be able to hear the word of God. When he said, cast out a little, Peter, he just said, a little. He just asked of a little. Cast out a little, Peter. And, and so when he cast out, and Peter said, yea, Lord, and he went out, and he enabled others to now be able to hear the word of God. Your obedience can lead to someone else's salvation. So don't dismiss the smallest detail that God is speaking to you because it's, it's preparation for the big thing God's... And see, the devil wants to get you discouraged. Man, you're, you're hoping for something and it doesn't go your way and then you hear God saying something or, or a pastor or a friend in the Lord tells you something and you're just like, oh man, I tried everything. Oh, I'm not going to do it. I've been to the altar ten times. Man, listen, that is negativity, man. That is of the devil. Man, if you've been to the altar 10 times, then go 11. Go 12. If you've got to go 30 times, then go 30. If it's 50, it's 50. But you keep going until you get your breakthrough. Amen? We don't give up on God. That, that may be a test. That, remember you know, when God told uh, Naaman to go dip seven times in the Jordan, and he copped an attitude. Oh, there's better rivers. I've got to go jump in some dirty lake. Listen, church, he went, he finally did. His, his servant said, man, if he'd have told you something real big and, and it was noble to do, you would have went and did it right away. But man, obey this word. And he went and he humbled himself and he dipped himself, you know the story, seven times. But what if he would have stopped at six? And I relate that to people coming to the altar. You, you know, you've come to the altar. And I've heard, had people say, listen, I've, I've been prayed for six times. And, you know, you know, God just, I guess that's not God's will. Or, no, man, it, it, God wants to see. He, he's building something in you. So, so you, you stop at the sixth time, and you don't get your miracle. Name and stop. If he would have stopped at the sixth time, if he would have went six and a half, he wouldn't have got his miracle. He had to do exactly what God said, seven times. And when he came up that seventh time, he was clean. He was healed. Hallelujah. So church, don't let the devil talk you out of obeying God in the smallest detail. Amen. 
the, the fifth thing I want to see, the principle here, is we must be willing to go deeper in the things of God. Now, if you, if you look at this passage of Scripture in Luke 5, and then and, and Jesus spoke, told him in verse 3, launch a little bit out, Peter, right? Peter obeyed him. The multitudes heard the word. People, I believe, got saved, probably healed, touched, all kinds of things happened. But then in verse 4, when he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets down. See, if Peter didn't obey God in the small thing, he would have never got to his miracle. See, small details are set up for big miracles. Hallelujah. And so here he is, and these principles to walking in the fullness of God. That's what this message is about. How can I walk in the fullness of what God has? How can I receive all that God has for me? So he says, Peter, you know, okay, he obeyed him in the little. Now I'm going to take you deeper. See, in the deep is where the bigger miracles are. Amen. Launch out into the deep and let your nets down. And remember, they toiled all night. So he says in verse 5, Simon answers and says, Master, we've toiled all night and we've caught nothing. He, see, he starts to go into that area of an excuse. Have you ever said, man, I've been praying for three days and, and God hasn't heard my prayer and God's not going to answer my prayer. And somebody says, well, come on, let's pray again, man. And sometimes we just get, we allow the devil to get us to discour into discouragement. But God's saying, I want to take you deeper. Sometimes the reason you have to pray more than two, three, four, five days, sometimes weeks, sometimes months, sometimes years, is because God is building something in you. God is preparing you for something bigger. And in the meantime, he's going to use you to touch other lives. Hallelujah. You got to, that's my fifth principle. You got to be willing to go deeper in the things of God. And I wrote this little thing. You got to get out of the safe zone and get into the faith zone. See, if you stay in a safe place, you'll never get into a faith place. And, and I know that's a little play on words, but little things like that, I notice some people will retain them. I do. That's how I remember some things. Man, I get into a place and God's calling me to do something. I go, ooh, man, I don't know, man. Oh, God, I just got to make sure it's you, you know. And it's God saying, man, you, you're, you're, you're playing it safe. And if you play it safe, you'll never get into the place of faith. So get out of the safe place and get into a faith place. Sometimes God asks you to do something and, and, and join a ministry, and you go, oh, Lord, I'm not equipped for that ministry. I've never done anything like that. Man, get out of the safe place. Get out of the safe place and get into the faith place because the faith place is the safe place. Come on, hallelujah. you got to get out of that uh, safe zone and into the faith zone. See, I wrote this kind of note. Faith is grabbing on to nothing and holding on, uh, holding on until it becomes something because God led you. I'm not talking about name it, claim it, grab it, blab it. I'm not talking about that. You know, listen, if God names it, you can claim it. But a lot of people out there are claiming stuff God didn't name. So if God names it, you can claim it. So, so don't go out there just grabbing anything. But wait, but the Lord has led you. Or the Lord has given you a promise through the word of God. Then lay hold on. And it may seem like nothing right now, but hold on until it becomes something. It's, and, then, and I put that in there, especially when God has led you. People have, you know, went after and chased things that God did not lead for them. People have been given words from a so-called prophet, and I believe in the gift of prophecy, and I believe in that. It's genuine, but there are genuine ones out there, and then there's the phonies. Some people out there just making people feel good, telling them words that make them feel good, but they are not of God. And they go chasing that word and then find out that word wasn't really of God. So we got to be real careful who we allow to speak into our life. In the shallow, you do not have to depend or trust God. In the shallows. Listen, my, my little granddaughter, if we take her over to the beach and she gets in the, in, the, in the water, if she's up to her ankles, she doesn't really have to depend or trust on us too much. But if she goes out there and it gets to her waist where she can get knocked down and pulled under that wave, there has to be a little more trust. If she goes a little deeper, now she really has to trust. Amen? And that's how we are. If we stay in the shallows and we're playing it safe, we don't have to trust God. But when God tells us to do something and go out and, and, and man, and just trust him, I remember when I was working, I, I made you know, very good money, had a very good job, and, and ran a company, and God told me, quit that job, you're going full-time in ministry, and the ministry could not pay me even a salary that, that could even pay my bills. And, and you know, I'm not going to tell you the whole story right now for time's sake, but God kept telling me. And every time I kept trying to reason with God, but God, I got, and he'd say, quit. All God kept saying was quit. He wouldn't give me another word other than, and it was almost like God was saying, until you obey what I told you, there's no other word to give you. 
And, it, and then I finally, it's, it's a long story, it's a great testimony, but finally I won, and then one day and I said, all right, this is it, this is the day, I'm obeying God, I'm just going to go in, I'm going to tell them, I'm going to give my, you know, month notice and I'm done. And don't you know they call me up first and try to offer me more things, try to get me to sign, you know, on to stay longer and, and all kinds of things that they had they were going to, you know, give to me that was financially would have put me in a good position. And the whole time they were talking, I just kept hearing God saying, I told you what to do. Don't even let this be a temptation. And so, church, sometimes we get into those things. We can't stay in the shallow when God has called us into the deep because you'll never grow. You'll dry up. Your, your walk will grow cold. You'll start going backwards. Man, you'll start losing your temper. You'll start, all kinds of things will start happening when you will not move out of the shallow when God's calling you into the deep. And here's another thing. You'll never experience the fullness of God in the shallows unless God's called you there. But God's usually calling us deeper. God will meet you in the safe place, but he'll take you to a faith place. Come on. God will meet you in the safe place, but he's going to draw you out to a faith place. And remember, here's another thing. In the shallows, there's no sharks. But step out for God, and the sharks will appear. Just like um, uh, Sway was telling me this morning about an incident he had when he was surfing, and he, he paddled out, him and a buddy, and, and a shark appeared. And his buddy paddled, caught a wave, jumped in. He didn't catch the wave, so, you know, he was paddling for all, his, all he could paddle for to get in. And, man, he was worried. He said, even to this day, it's always in the back of his mind. And, you know, what, what I noticed is when I was just serving in ministry under other leadership and under my senior pastor, and I was kind of covered and protected, but when God called me out, and I really saw some sharks appear. <laughs> and if you step out in ministry, you're going to see some sharks. And some of these sharks don't all have fins. They got feet. Come on. Somebody help me out. Anybody that's been in ministry will be amen in that. Hallelujah. But you got to see out in the deep, you got to trust God. When you encounter sharks, you're going to have to trust God. Amen. If you, don't, if you don't know how to pray, you'll learn how to pray when the shark comes at you. Amen. You'll be praying and paddling for all you got. In the deep, you can't even see a shark coming. So you've got to rely on the discernment of God, the discernment of the Holy Spirit to let you know, man, there are people that will come up and smile at you, but the devil's using them. And, and, but God will give you that discernment, amen, and we can react in love. In the deep, when I said you can't see him coming, what if Moses, Abraham, Paul, Mary, what if they would have all stayed in a safe place? They would have never seen the miracles of God. Moses would have never seen the Red Sea open. Noah would have never seen the, the ark float and the, and, the, and the miracles that God performed in, in sparing and saving uh, the world through him and his family. He would have never seen the miracle of his family being saved. Mary would have ne never gave the miracle birth to Jesus Christ. I mean, think about this. Paul would have never experienced the power and the presence, the resurrection power of Jesus Christ if he stayed in a safe place and didn't step out into a faith place. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember, the water of the Jordan didn't stop the second time until they put their foot in. See, the first time, God stopped the water, and they, they crossed over. The second time, it was a raging river, and they, it didn't stop until the priests put their foot in that river, and they were carrying the presence of God. They were led into that river. See, some people want to put their foot in when God didn't lead them, but God led them. They were carrying the ark, the presence of God. Hallelujah. Led the priest to step into that water, led by the priesthood. Man, God is so good. Hallelujah. But they had to step out of that safe place into a faith place to see the miracles of God. Hallelujah. By faith do we cross over into the land of plenty. If you stay in the safe place, man, remember the one tribe wanted to stay on the one side of the Jordan. They didn't want to cross over. They were fearful of the giants. But they said, hey, who's going to go over? Who's going to fight? Who's willing to come take what God has told us to take? See, by nature, we're not willing to leave the safe place. So God sometimes has to dry up your brook so you'll get into the faith place. Remember the prophet? God was feeding him by the birds, and he, and he had the, the little brook there and, and was using that for his resource and water and things like that. Well, God dried up that brook so he could get the prophet into the faith place and out of the safe place. Come on, somebody. I'm going to drill that until you get it into your mind. In the deep, you'll be attacked by the shark of doubt. There's sharks, sharks of discouragement. There's sharks of worry, sharks of fear. Hallelujah. But that should cause us to press in closer to God and not get into the flesh, but get into the spirit. It should draw us deeper into the things of God, into a faith place and not a safe place. Number six, the sixth principle. 
Be careful with making excuses. And in verse 5, Simon said, No, Master, we toiled all night. We have caught nothing. They were fishermen. This is what they did for a living. But I love Peter, man. Part of the flesh tried to come in there and say, Lord, we're, we're, we're experienced fishermen, man. We've been fishing all night. We haven't caught anything. And then the, the, he caught himself, right? The Spirit of God, man. And maybe it was the look Jesus was giving. Maybe Jesus got like a little smile. You know, just a smile on his face, waiting to see where Peter was going to go with it. And Peter says, you know what, Lord? We've done everything we knew to do. But he says, nevertheless, at your word, I will obey. I will let down this net. Hallelujah. Remember, everything is different when Jesus calls you to do it. They were out there doing whatever their thing was, and Jesus didn't let them be successful so he could come into their life and lead them into their destiny and purpose that he had for their lives. And listen, we'll never be satisfied in the place of just enough. I don't know anybody that says, man, I'm satisfied with just enough. We're never going to be satisfied. I'm talking about the things of God, spiritual things now. You know, Paul talks about being content in all things. But I'm saying when it comes to God, I don't want to be content. I want more. I want to go deeper. I want to know God deep, more deeply for who he is. And that's a dangerous prayer because he's going to pull you in the deep to teach you those things. Hallelujah. So, But you'll never be satisfied in the place of just enough, man. God has so much more for us, church. I said it on Sunday. We are living so much beneath what God has for his church. Hallelujah. But here's the thing. Remember, to kill doubt, you got to eat faith. To kill doubt, you got to eat faith. That's why I say, come out, feed your faith, and starve out the devil. Amen? Get rid of the old stinking thinking, man, and step out into the things of God. You know, remember, God will deal with all your issues in the deep so he can get you ready to fulfill your purpose. God is dealing with Peter. Starts out little, then he takes him out into the deep, then he says, drop your nets. Man, there's three things, four, actually, if you go back to the being of obedience that Peter did before that miracle even took place. Hallelujah. And that's verses 6 through 10. And they, they had this big number of fish. The net started to break, so they signaled to their partners and other boats to come help them. See, when God starts to fill you, it's not just to fill you, it's to overflow you. So you, in the overflow, the people around you are going to get blessed. The people that come in contact with you should be blessed. They should, they should recognize there's something different about you. There's something flowing out of you. See, God doesn't want to just fill you to fill you. He wants to fill you to touch others too. Amen? Hallelujah. God is good. Let's go to number seven. The seventh and final principle, you've got to be willing to forsake all and follow Jesus. And that's verse 11. This is the last verse I'm going to be uh, reading. So when they brought, bought their boats to the land, they forsook all and followed Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. See, Jesus became the priority in their life. It wasn't even their job. It wasn't their income. Listen, that was, the, Jesus called them out of their occupation at the highest, most successful time they had ever had in that business. And then he's calling them out. Hallelujah, man. They recognize those things are resources, but God is the source. And he became the priority. The blessings of God are designed for us to know God in a greater intimacy. God does these things not to show off, but to draw us into greater intimacy and greater revelation, which builds our faith so we can go deeper in the things of God and fulfill the purpose. We, are wonder we were fearfully and wonderfully made, the Bible says. Remember Abraham, who knew God in covenant, came to know him as the Jehovah Jireh. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham had faith. Abraham knew God, but God took him even deeper. And I'm going to be talking about that in a few weeks for at least two parts of a message about that. And so, man, you'll be watching that. Hallelujah. And so forsake. I want to just break these words God, down. Forsake all. It means to lay aside, to leave, to yield up or over, to put away. You know, sometimes I found what God is, it's not necessarily that you have to give up everything. You have to be willing to give up everything. They were willing to give up anything and everything that it took to follow Jesus. And that's the other word. He said they forsook all and they followed. Remember, the Jesus didn't tell them, didn't say Jesus said forsake all and follow me in this passage of Scripture. They came to that revelation through how God, he's so good. He knows what each person needs. Some people may need to be told that. 
But, but they didn't need that. God knew exactly what they needed, and he knows exactly what you need. And I believe this word tonight is for those who are listening to this word, those who are watching archive. Man, pray and say, God, what is it that you have for me? What do you want me to do? And just do something. If you're saying, man, I'm not hearing God, I, then go get involved in something. Serve somebody. Man, go serve somebody. And God will, will clarify what he has for your life. He followed a company. It means a company as a disciple, a to accompany as a disciple, to be in union with, to be yoked with. Hallelujah. So they were willing to lay down everything else and then yoke with Jesus Christ and follow him and accompany him, walk with him as a disciple. Hallelujah. Well, church, praise God. I gave you these seven principles, being willing to press in. Number two, hear the word of God and let it have an effect. Number three, be empty vessels. Number four, immediately respond to the word. Number five, be willing to go deeper. Man, number six, don't make excuses. Don't let the devil give you excuses and hinder you from what God has. And number seven, you've got to be willing to forsake everything and follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for the night's message. I thank you for everything that you're doing, everything that you've done. Thank you for all the support staff that are that are make this able and possible for us to do this. And I pray, God, that everyone that's listening, everyone that's hearing this message through the, through the, the, the Word of God that's going forth, through whether they log on now or, or an archive later, God, that they will be provoked to serve you, to forsake all, to follow, to listen, to obey, to press in, to hear the Word of God, let it take effect, to get out of the safe place and into the faith place. Lord, ordain it now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you, church. Hope to see you Sunday and look forward to, to gathering together as saints and worshiping God. God bless you.